Hi guys, this is SDJRSF88 speaking with the fifth instalment of Fry Summerdale. So welcome to this fifth update on Fry Summerdale and as you can see there has been plenty of progress on the layout and it is very, very much nearing completion. Fingers crossed, if all goes well, we might even see some trains running in this update. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I've managed to crack on with since the previous update is finishing off the woodland, thanks to a top up of the uh, woodland scenic fine leaf foliage. So as you can see, I've done the other side of the cutting now, along with the trees in this area, as well as the tree arch, which crosses the entrance to the fiddle yard. So starting off at the top of the cutting, I've uh, managed to find some nice uh, shaped pieces which resemble trees. And basically I've done as what I mentioned in the previous update. I went through the packs and found the uh, biggest pieces which you know, could be used as trees themselves. Uh, I then found some medium piece pieces which would be used for up against the back scene to give the effect of trees off in the distance. And then some of the smaller pieces I kept in a third pile uh, which will be used as ground cover. And as you can see I've gone and used some of those around the bases of the trees and of course overhanging on the top of the walls. I've also used that in the cutting itself to give the effect of sort of the brambles and other sort of you know, dense foliage that was uh, sort of grew up around the edge of the cutting uh, once the railway was in service. The tree arch itself has been added in position and you can see I've used this sort of well selected piece of the dark uh, green leaf foliage which has most of its leaves missing and it gives the effect of uh, where locomotives have passed underneath it and the exhaust has sort of uh, scorched and uh, removed many of the leaves from the branches so I thought that was uh, quite a nice piece to use in there. So as mentioned I've used the foliage to blend in the walls and while we're on the subject of the walls I've done a little bit of detailing to these as well. These are of course uh, made from Metcalf uh, brick paper and to sort of give it a bit more texture and make it look a bit more natural I've gone over with a uh, smoke effect uh, weathering powder and it's brought out some nice little tones in there very similar to those that you can see in the pictures of the wall where uh, water and uh, other sort of dirt has sort of seeped its way through the brickwork uh, over time and uh, I hope I managed to achieve that quite well there. I've also added the coping stones around the top uh, on both sides so as you can see we've got one running along the top there and these have been also added to the step effect at either end on both sides of the wall so all in all I'm very very happy with how the walls are looking now. I've also blended in the bases uh, where there was a bit of a gap between the actual road surface and the wall. I filled that in with some of the green scene textured paint before also going over that with a bit more of weathering powders. And as you can see here, I've got a bit darker uh, to give the effect of road dirt, where obviously dirt from the wheels of cars passing by on the uh, busy road have sort of given this sort of dirt effect along the bottom of the wall there. So I've also got round to finishing off the iconic gateway and as you can see both of the posts have now been fully weathered, they've been glued into position along with the matching gate. So I'm very very pleased with how this sort of whole little cameo scene has turned out. I've also added a little paving slab to the one on the right hand side of the entrance there. As looking at pictures I recently got a couple of books about the Fry site and the railway. There was a really nice picture taken from the inside of the cutting and there was a paving slab on that side uh, to sort of help the, uh, the, the worker opening up that gate to get his footing to sort of push it into position. So I've decided to add that in and weather that in as well. But yeah, on a whole, I'm really, really pleased with the how the, the gate has sort of turned out. Of course, you guys have been putting in suggestions as trying to make this uh, sort of little scene operate. Uh, but of course, with the train being on a shuttle system, I didn't think that would be sort of uh, uh, you know, feasible for the moment. But of course, they are only lightly glued on there. So I can remove them at a later date and maybe make them uh, move at some stage in the future. I've also finished adding the greenery to the area next to the car park. Uh, this has included gluing the billboards in position and basically blending them in with more of the fine leaf foliage. So as you can see I've added a tree to this area. Again this was a well picked uh, bit of fine leaf foliage. I then used some of the smaller pieces to create the brambles that have sort of grown up around the bottom of each of the billboards there. And they do fit in there really, really nicely. Especially if you get a camera in uh, along the road looking back into the car park, it does set the scene off really, really nicely. Uh, this You can only see this sort of scene just in the background of photos, so it was quite hard to sort of uh, gauge where everything was too, but I think I've managed to do it justice.
So of course, one of the details that really brings any layout to life is the figures. And as you can see here, we've got a selection, of some of which have only literally just arrived uh, whilst filming. So starting off from the left, we have some Model U figures. Uh, these are the ones in the uh, brown uh, sort of boiler suits. And these are of course the uh, figures of my grandfather and myself. And I've had these positioned on the layout, acting as a sort of crossing keepers, a loco crew, and they fit in quite well. And you'll see those hopefully in some uh, of the clips later on in this video. Then moving on to the right, we have these four figures here. Now these are the ones that have literally just arrived and these are from Hardy's Hobbies. And uh, what can I say, they are absolutely wonderful. Uh, these are his pre-painted figures, so he's gone and uh, painted these for me, so I've, I've cheated a bit here. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's painted these and they, they look absolutely wonderful. So starting from the left and moving to the right, we have this crossing uh, keeper figure with a red flag. Now this one was specially commissioned and I believe it's now part of his range. Uh, originally this was, uh, um, I think it was a, a loco crew of some sort. Uh, but the flag has been added into his hand and as you can see it really does work a treat and there are many pictures uh, of the actual crossing keeper there or uh, a member of the crew that got off and flagged the loco across and they were in this very position and uh, uniform so we managed to find uh, a coloured image uh, which he then used to paint up his uniform and he really does look the uh, part so I can't wait to get him on the edge of the crossing there. The next figure to him is a railway photographer. Now, some of you might recognise this figure or the, the chap that this, uh, this figure in particular has been modelled on, uh, especially if you watch a certain uh, you know, series uh, called uh, Steam Locomotives in Profile. Anyway, I, I thought it'd be great um, uh, to have a figure of uh, the man himself on the layout uh, with a camera and of course I'm going to position him somewhere over by the fencing, by the crossing, uh, pretty much where the photograph, or, well one of the most famous photographs of this uh, scene was taken where the 22 is sort of just peeking through the wall there. So we could basically make out that this chap here was taking that photograph. So I plan to get a, a little car to park up in the car park, um, a one I believe that uh, this chap uh, used to own, which of course is the correct time period for this layout so I'm hoping to find one in the right colour and hopefully pop that next to him in the little car park there. Then moving on to the last two figures we have these guys here and these are loco crew and these are going to be for uh, destined for a locomotive of some sort in the not too distant future. I use some of these in the Sentinel and they really do look wonderful so I thought I'd grab a few more uh, while I put this order in along with another 3D uh, locomotive body uh, kit uh, so that's something else to sort of keep me occupied uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, but yeah, these will go on the footplate of some loco at some point. And again, you can see the detail on them is absolutely wonderful. So yeah, let me know what you think. And of course, I'll pop a little link in the description below to go and check uh, Hardy's Hobbies out as well. So as well as the figures, I've also got around to placing a couple of vehicles on the layout. Now these won't be glued down, much like the figures, uh, this allows me to uh, of course change the uh, positions and of course the uh, period of the layout. So what we've got here at the moment is in the distance we've got an Austin A35. I thought it would be nice to have this little car on the layout as uh, my other grandfather, my, uh, my late grandfather, my um, dad's dad, uh, used to have one of these and it was probably the first car my dad ever re ever remembers and it was in grey. Uh, so I thought it would be a nice little tribute to have that car uh, located somewhere on, on this layout. So I plan to find one in grey at a later date. But for now, this little cream and uh, red one fits on there quite nicely. The other vehicle is a Bedford British Rail crew bus. And I thought this is uh, a nice little vehicle to have on here. It's been sitting in my loft for quite a while and uh, I just thought it just suits the scene quite, uh, quite well. These vehicles will of course have a little bit of weathering on them as they are a bit clean at the moment uh, but they fit the scene really really nicely and as mentioned I do plan to get a couple of other vehicles uh, such as a, a, a Morris Traveller um, to go with the uh, photographer you saw in the previous clip as well. However I've not just been working on the layout itself, I've also been weathering and detailing rolling stock. One of which is this, Batman Class 08, which has been renumbered to 08935 and has been heavily weathered, just as it was pictured in Fry Somerdale sidings towards the end of the railway's life. And I thought it would be really, really nice to sort of recreate that locomotive in model form to show the layout in that period. And I'm really, really pleased with how the model has turned out. So, of course, there's one thing left to do, and as promised at the start of the video, and that is of course getting the layout running. So, without further ado, enjoy this little running session.
there you have it. I guess that's all for this update and uh, possibly the series. I hope you enjoyed this build uh, and how it's transformed from a blank baseboard to what it has become. And once again, thank you ever so much for all the positive comments and feedback on the layout. Of course, the layout, there's still a few things that I want to sort of do to it. Uh, mainly strengthening the bottom of the baseboards. I plan to add some L-shaped batten like up here to the bases just to make it nice and strong for when I transport it about. As of course, I hope to get this layout to shows in the not too distant future. As you all know, many exhibitions have sadly been cancelled and postponed for this year. But hopefully when things get back to normal um, and you know, we're able to do the things we, we enjoy once again, I'm sure we'll be able to um, hopefully get Fry Summerdale out on the circuit for you guys to see it in the flesh. So anyway, I guess that's all for this video. And uh, this has been SDJRSNF88 speaking and thanks for watching.